Well, the Republicans have taken it one step further. They have made the claim, the outrageous claim, that they are fighting a war on coal. A war on coal. The industry has gotten an estimated $17 billion in coal subsidies in the past six years, and they think the Obama administration is waging a war on coal. And yet, the very last bill that the House passed this session was actually called the Stop the War on Coal Act, which rolls back environmental regulations on the coal industry. Now, Massachusetts Democratic Representative Edward Markey had this priceless response. When the Republicans say there is a war on coal, well, in a market sense, yes, there is a war. In the same sense that when we started using Macs and PCs, it was a war on typewriters. In the same sense that the horseless carriage was a war on horses. In the same sense that refrigerators were a war on salted meats. I just love that. <laughs> so, well, Congress is perfectly happy to pick winners when it comes to fossil fuels like coal and oil. As for renewables, not so much. Congress has decided not, as we have discussed here on the show, to extend the production tax credit for wind energy, even though that credit has helped boost the fledgling wind sector, which has already created more than 35,000 jobs since the credit went into effect. And still, Romney has called the clean energy investments a boondoggle. His campaign said that he would allow that wind credit to expire. One of the major beneficiaries of the tax credit is the swing state of Colorado, where as many as 5,000 of those wind energy jobs have been created. The president is now leading in Colorado by a very narrow margin, just two points, according to Real Clear Politics. Mitt Romney was in Colorado Monday and actually talked about energy independence and renewable energy, even though his policies would very clearly shrink the renewable energy sector to the point where you could drown it in a bathtub. Now for more on how clean energy is generating jobs and strengthening the Colorado economy, we're going to turn to Denver and Colorado Democratic Senator Mark Udall. Senator, it's so great to have you inside the war room tonight. Hey, Governor. Great to see you. Great to hear you. And uh, you remember uh, Senator Kerry pointed out that Governor Romney needed to finish the debate with himself before he debates the president next week, and that's no more apparent than it is on this energy front. The Republican ticket is on the wrong side of history, as you pointed out. And isn't, isn't Ed Markey marvelous in the way he oh, set up yeah. uh, what the choice is? Yeah. Well, so, Senator Udall, how is, just talk about, from your perspective as Senator from Colorado, how is the energy issue playing out in yeah. Colorado? We're, we're in all of the above energy state, Jennifer. We have coal. We, we're producing a lot of natural gas. We have some oil. We have abundant wind and solar and geothermal. Uh, so we're pursuing all of those options. But one of the great success stories here in Colorado has been our wind energy industry. You mentioned Vestas. We have four facilities here manufacturing everything from the blades to the towers to the nacelles. Uh, this will be close to your heart as a Michigan governor. 8,000 parts are needed in a, in a wind yeah. turbine. I don't know how many parts go into an automobile, but the supply chain uh, dynamic is really an exciting one here in Colorado. And then lo and behold, Mitt Romney comes to Colorado this summer and says he would let the production tax credit expire because somehow we're weighting the scales on the side of renewables. Yeah, he's just flat out wrong. His policy would ruin our wind industry. And frankly, he's now running into political winds of the wrong kind because of his position on the production tax credit. I just don't well, get it. Uh, he needs let me, to let me ask Colorado you about that. And he's, I, yeah. I, I, I want to yeah. ask you about that because there are a lot of Republicans who are also on board with the wind subsidies, at least the tax credit, to create new industry, at least for a period of time while this industry gets uh, embedded here in the United States. More of the wind energy development in Republican districts is present. Eighty-one percent of the wind energy development is in Republican districts. So. Don't you think uh, there could be bipartisan support for the production tax credit? The, there is in the Senate. Senator Grassley, Senator Moran, uh, Senator Brown, and others have been really supportive of extending the PTC. And by the way, what does the production tax credit do for rural communities? It's a cash crop uh, that's predictable every year. Most of the wind blows in agricultural areas. We also have manufacturing states like yours in the Midwest that are dying uh, to, to, to regain a manufacturing footing. And so, again, I just, this is beyond tone deaf 
on the part of the Romney campaign. Let me say one other thing. The wind industry doesn't expect to have this subsidy forever. They right. want it phased out. But as you said, it's a fledgling industry. It needs these incentives, and they've been, they've been very, very helpful in building uh, our uh, manufacturing base back to where we want it to be. Well, you, you personally have been testifying dozens of times on the Senate floor about Hi. this. And do you think that in lame duck it can get renewed? What's the likelihood of getting this production it, tax credit passed? It better get renewed in the lame duck. And by the way, by waiting that long, we will have hurt the industry because yeah. a lot of uh, projects are being put on hold, as you know. And what we need to do is extend it, not for a year in the lame duck, but for two years and make it retroactive. And that will help the industry uh, have the certainty that we hear Republicans call for all the time. You hear this, there's uncertainty this and uncertainty yeah. that. And this is enormous amount of uncertainty. The other thing I want to say, Governor, is that you think about uh, all the policies that Romney proposes, although it's mostly in general statements. This, the, the lack of, uh, of a PTC will cost us jobs that we already have in hand. Why would we let those jobs slip through our fingers and export jobs to China? It makes no sense. Absolutely. Well, according to the database that's compiled by the House Energy and Commerce Committee, House Republicans have actually voted 315 times this Congress to block some kind of action to address climate change and to undermine environmental regulations and protections. I don't know how we can get voters to recognize the obstructionism, especially when it comes to jobs, and throw the bums out. Maybe I should ask the you this. Should there be a, a scientific <laughs> literacy test to be a politician? Well, I, yes, there should be, number one. Number two, uh, you remember in the Bush era there was this uh, faith-based approach to policymaking, and then there were many of us who were saying we ought to be reality-based and science-based. Yeah. Uh, we need to go back to a science and reality-based approach to policymaking. And by the, by the way, I sit on the Armed Services Committee. And who leads the fight on responding to climate change in a smart and uh, 21st century way? It's the military because they know that energy security will benefit us, that there will be environmental benefits, and that uh, the job creation will help get our economy and back it's on its feet. I it's mean, a win -win they're defending our the country board. to make us independent from foreign oil, too. That's the, lives are in our military. Oh, I really, i I'm, I got to go, but, the, um, Senator, I just so appreciate you joining me inside the war room. You're, you're thoughtful. You're a battler for the things that are important, and hopefully we can get you some more help after the election. Thanks for joining us. Not uh, next.